Okay, uh, welcome to uh, session eight, uh, message authentication codes. Uh, in this session, we have two papers. Uh, the first paper is on wikis and the virtual attacks against uh, polynomial based map schemes uh, by Gordon Adopter and uh, Carlos C. Okay. Uh, this paper has been selected as the best paper of uh, FX in 2013, and the uh, our giving ceremony will take place uh, at today's dinner. So please give us your talk. Thank you very much for the introduction. So this is a joint work with Carlos uh, Sid. I'm going to start by going through the main contributions. So we, we study the, the underlying algebraic structure of these, these maps and hashes. And this leads on to a sort of generalized forgery attack that uh, extends the work of Saarinen from FSC last year and gives us a, a common language to describe all of the existing attacks against GCA and um, gives us a, also gives us a length extension of the attack. And as a, another consequence, uh, we get some different weak key classes for these hash functions and these map hack constructions. So almost every subset of the space is a weak key class. Uh, based on these three points, the talk comes in three sections too. Uh, an introduction of the, the background and the algebraic structure, then uh, a section on orders and a section on the So we're going to uh, assume that we've got some message, which will probably have some ciphertext, maybe some additional authentication data, probably the message length. And we're going to pick some field and chop our message up so that each message block is just a field element. And then our hash function family uh, is going to take a string of field elements and give us back just one field element. And we'll index, our, uh, index these hash functions with h some hash key. That's again just, just another field element. And the, the common description for these, these hash functions is that we, we take our message and use that to define the polynomial. So that's this bit here. So each of the MIs are just, just the coefficients of the polynomial. And then we evaluate this polynomial as a hash key. And we, we use these that are generally fast. We've got these uh, good collision probabilities for the universal and couple wavelength hash functions. And from this family, we can build a map. Uh, so we encrypt, encrypt the output of the hash somehow, maybe encrypt the nonce, that's this bit, uh, and add that on, uh, or just push the whole thing through a box like that. But for the sake of this talk, we don't really care which one of these you do, um, because in either case, if the oops, if this bit doesn't change, if the output, the hash function is the same, then the output of your Mac algorithm uh, is also the same. And so we just get a, a Mac forgery. So a few real examples. Um, Galar counter mode is the one that uh, Dan was just talking about from McGrew and Viego in 2005. So they pick uh, f trims to 128 and derive our hash key from the block cipher key just by encrypting zero. And this additive encrypting the nonce and adding that on. Uh, Dan's probably 1305, again, slightly different field, um, no relation between the, the hash key and the, uh, the block cipher key, but just the same additive encryption. CWC, another different field, um, another different me method for deriving the hash key. Uh, and here it's doing both of the, uh, it encrypts the hash and then adds on the nonce. Again, so we don't really care about this because if you've got the hash collision then you get the, the match boundary. And Sarian's uh, Sophie Germain transfer mode, which was proposed after GCN last year, um, it picks this field down here uh, as a, a Sophie Germain prime. And the idea behind this is that it gives you some extra protection against the sniping attacks. Um, I'll give a, a quick description of uh, a bit later. Uh, and other than that, it's essentially the same as Galar counter mode. This is what GCM's map looks like. So our message is along the top here. We've got some authenticated data, some counter mode encrypted ciphertext, and then we stick the message length on the end. And then this, this multiply and XOR and multiply and XOR uh, is the evaluation of, of the polynomial. And the, the, the right hand side is, is the, the encryption to give us the, the Mac. So, how, how do we come up with these forgeries? 
we first need to decide what we're going to let our adversary do. Um, so we say that he can ask for, give, give us a monster message, and we'll tell him what, what a valid tag is, uh, as long as he doesn't repeat the monsters. And um, he's also allowed to ask for some some people that he, he picks, we'll, we'll tell him whether that's a valid tag. And so his aim is to find find some nonce and messages and tag that's valid without just asking for it. And one way that he could do that is to um, start with the, some nonce and some message, get a valid tag for it, find a hash collision, and then just substitute <coughs> m for m primed, and then there's a, a valid tag, a valid tuple. And so what, what we suggest is that if we um, dot h our unknown hash key, um, and we're going to suppose that we can write down some, uh, some polynomial, this forgery polynomial q. So it hasn't got, there's no q0, there's no constant term, because there's no constant term in the, the message, in the, the hash polynomial. And let's just, just suppose for the moment that, that we know that q of h is zero. So in the, the first line here, is just the definition of the evaluation of hash. And because, because q of h is zero, we can just add that on here, and that doesn't, doesn't change anything. We've still got equality. If we, if we collect all the like terms together, and we maybe zero had one of, uh, one of m and one of q, um, well, this bit here is, is just the hash of some other message, m plus q. And so what we've done is starting from Starting from a polynomial with this, where we know that q of h is zero, um, we've got a hash collision. And as I said earlier, we've got a hash collision when we found the map forgery. So if we know that the nonce message in the tag is a valid tuple, then it's, it's valid for this new message precisely when this forgery polynomial is zero. And that's um, yeah, so a stupid remark. That's the same as saying that it's in the hash keys in a set of roots of this polynomial. And uh, that, that's the description we're going to use for the weak keys uh, in the next section. So how do we how do we choose our four three polynomial? Well in general it's, it's difficult because if we don't know if we don't know what h is then we don't know whether q of h is zero. Um, so we could just sort of cross our fingers and hope and say that there's um, some number of roots for q and our four three is successful if the hash key is one of those. And there's the you know, size of the field possible hash keys, so there's our probability. And this suggests that what we would like is for Q of X to have lots of have lots of roots, so we get a good forgery probability. Um, so we pick a pick a forgery polynomial of high degree and with no repeated roots, because that's sort of wasting effort. So the the, uh, the naive approach, the, the stupid method for writing down Q of X is to just pick some subset of the key space and then multiply together all of these factors down here um, and, yeah, and that's going to be zero if, uh, if the hash key is, is in, in this set. We need to add in, make sure we're adding zero so we don't get a constant term, so that's uh, not so important. So we've written down a sort of stupid method for, um, for finding our, our quadri polynomial. Um, actually, all of the current attacks against DTM are defined in terms of the, the polynomials that they're, they're using. So, Ferguson attacks DTM if we use uh, short tags. And he relies on using linearized polynomials and because squaring the linear in, uh, in this field of character two. So, Q of X looks, looks a bit like this polynomial. Um, there might be some different coefficients, but it still has the same structure. Uh, this is nice because we can keep track of the, the field elements that are still possible hash keys using a big matrix. Zhu attacks GCM if we repeat answers. Um, so for this one we need to have two tuples that were both valid with the same, uh, for the same nonce. And because in GCM we XOR this encryption of the nonce in, if we XOR the tags together over here, that's the same as XORing the hashes together. Um, we can collect that all together onto one side. And then this, this hash here is just some polynomial in H. Uh, and the, the XOR of the tags is just some constant field element. So if we multiply it all through by, by H, then we've got another forgery polynomial. 
because they, they, they attack. It's, it's going to be successful if uh, if the actual hash key is, is the root of, of this polynomial. Saren and uh, FSE last year suggested what we should really be doing is looking for subgroups of the, the field. Because in that case, the, the sum power t, when we raise the hash key to that power, we get back to the to 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 one. So I've got another stupid bullet point. Um, if, if this is true, we can multiply both sides by h and get this, and collect it all on one side, and that's a polynomial in h that, that's zero, uh, if and only if our attack is successful. So if we kind of cross our fingers and hope that um, that our hash key is an element of this subgroup, <coughs> this first line here is just the definition of the hash. And then we know that h is equal to h plus <coughs> 1, or at least we're, we're hoping it is. Um, and so there's no problem swapping m1 and mt plus 1. So we've got a new message with the same hash. And the, the suggested fix for this was to, to pick a field where there aren't so many subgroups, um, because then we're, we're less likely to be able to find, we're, we're less likely to have this holding. Um, maybe, maybe we'd like a bit more control over the, the message that we're, we're going to forge. Maybe we, we can predict what, what's going on. Um, we know that in the forge message, each block is just going to be the original block plus the coefficient of the forge requirement. So if it's uh, in the original message, if it's authenticated data, then we, we know what that is in the clear, so we know what's, what it's going to be in the forge message. And if it's counter mode encrypted, it's like a text, uh, and the characteristic of the field we're evaluating it is two or all of the additions are just out tools. Um, so adding on uh, something to the, the cipher text is the same as adding it onto the play text. Uh, we can do a bit better than this, because um, multiply multiplying our quadrant polynomial here by some alpha in, in the field that doesn't change anything. And now if we, if we forge with alpha q rather than with q, um, mi becomes mi plus alpha qi, uh, and we can pick any alpha that we want. So it means for, for one message block, we, we, we can choose, choose our alpha so that, um, in that that message block has uh, the differential that, that we that we would like, uh, and this is how we, we get the, the length extension of that. So in GCM, your message looks looks a bit like this. The first block is the um, is the, the length of the associated data in the ciphertext, and then then the rest of your message follows. And we only use the, the length field to compute the hash. Um, we don't actually send that with with the rest of the message. And what we suggest is you should you pick your forgery polynomial. So you either use the, the stupid method uh, from earlier, or one of the existing um, forgery polynomials in another attack. And we need to know what the value of the length field is in the valid message. Um, so you can see how long the message is, so we can work out um, what the length field should be, as long as, as long as we can tell where the associated data in the ciphertext uh, starts. Then we need to know what length we'd like this value to encode. Um, so that's the length of m plus alpha q, and that's easy because we know the length of m, and we know what q is because we chose that. That's not a problem, and we just need to pick the right alpha so that when we forge, the length of m becomes the length of m plus alpha q, and so you should make sure you pick the right alpha to get this. So why is this a good thing? Well, with a sniping attack, the best you can the best you can do is to have a watering probability of m over the size of the field. And here, m is the length of the message that you're, you're given at the beginning, um, the length of the, the message in the value of the tuple. So with this, we can increase the length of the message um, and get a, a better success probability with a much shorter value attack. Because if you, if you imagine having a uh, field with subgroups of size uh, 3 and 5. If you've got a 4 block message, you can't use the subgroup of order 5, you can only use the subgroup of order 3, so you've kind of wasted one of the, the message blocks that you, that you did have. Um, whereas now we can get much better successful abilities, um, and we, we don't care how long the original valid message is. Uh, in this case, we've got a, a success probability of the, the maximum of M over the size of K. This is the, the maximum permissible message length that your construction operates on. 
Um, this is described in, yeah, it's, it's in the original security groups, it's in Dan's Poly 1305 paper. Um, but this, this is the big data that sort of realizes, realizes that. Quick jump to the repeat. There's been, been a few papers today that have uh, talked about weak keys. Um, the, the definition we're taking is from Andrew and Priel in 2008. And they say that a set of keys is a, a weak key class if um, something unexpected happens. So in this case, we're going to say that we want the portrait probability to be higher than you would otherwise expect it to be um, if we use one of these keys. And we can detect whether one of those keys is being used um, we can't just say, is it the first one, is it the second one, is it the third one? Perhaps these are things better than that. Um, and we're allowed up to the size of the um, verification groups. So the, the weak key classes that are currently known is um, if, it, if the key is zero, then um, the, the hash of the message never changes for whatever the message is, because your, your polynomial is just m1 times zero plus m2 times zero plus m3 times zero. Um, so you never get anything different out of your out of your hash. And Tyrion says, well, actually these uh, these subgroups, we can detect whether it's whether the, the key is in one of these subgroups because our, if our ordinary when we swap two message blocks is successful, then uh, our, our keys in, in this subgroup. And, and what we show is actually there's, there's loads of these weak key classes. Um, so D, D is weak if um, if there's more than three elements in it, um, or if it, if, you're, if this set is the zero key and one other key. Um, and we're going to do this by testing whether um, you, you use the, the, the stupid method uh, for, for constructing your ordering polynomials. Um, and first test if h is in d or it's zero, and then maybe we need to rule out whether, uh, whether h is zero. Uh, what, what does this mean? Well, these are properties of, of all polynomial hashes. Um, it's not, not something specific to GCM. Um, and there aren't any safe fields. So at no point have I said anything particularly relating to the, the field that you choose. So um, simple domain counter mode isn't, isn't much better in this respect uh, than GCM. But it does protect against some of the nice methods of just writing down um, good, uh, good field X's. So this, more details about that in the paper. I think it's fairly well known that maximum message length is, is important for these constructions. Um, and what, what we've sort of demonstrated and um, confirmed, because it, it is in the original, uh, original papers, is that the, the maximum message length is what really matters. Um, and the size of the field, um, is that those are the two things that determine the quadri mobility. All of the polynomial evaluation hashes have, have lots and lots of weak keys. Um, maybe it's better to talk about this uh, as, as an unavoidable property of the, um, that, that comes from the construction, um, rather than just counting the weak key classes. Um, the, the, the key question is uh, whether having all of these weak key classes uh, makes the algorithm weak. Um, in, the, in the case of GCM, it's, it's not such a problem. Um, because the, the parameters are, are chosen quite well. But um, maybe if you were to try and change DCM to make it faster and lighter and smaller, um, this is something that you probably should be aware of. That's me. Thank you very much.